Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in to 12 News at Noon. I'm Tracy Kennig. A year after her murder, Port Arthur police have yet to receive a single tip in the death of 22-year-old Jasmine Newman. Newman was shot outside her friend's home after returning from celebrating her birthday. She would have turned 24 years old today. Her friends and family are still looking for answers, and they say they're not giving up hope. Renisha Collins was one of the three innocent bystanders who was shot in front of her own home. I wasn't worried about me at that time. I was just worried about was my friend still alive. If you have any information about Newman's murder, you're asked to contact the Port Arthur Police Department or Crime Stoppers. You could earn a cash reward and you can remain anonymous. The distress calls to dispatch came one after another. Uh, just cool down. Uh, we're coming to you. We're coming to you. That's the voice of Officer Courtney Waller. He's expected to be okay. I've been hit. He shot me in the arm. But the outlook was much more serious for another officer who answered the family disturbance call, Sergeant Harold Preston. I think Sergeant Preston is right in front of the, uh, the, the apartment. He's down. He's not responding, and the suspect is right there. HPD's SWAT team rushed to the scene, hoping to help their fallen comrade in time. We have canines coming with ballistic shield. If you can do an officer rescue, perform one. Wait for a team. Houston police now mourning one of their own this afternoon, Sergeant Harold Preston. He was killed in the line of duty yesterday. He had been with the department for 41 years, and yesterday, those who knew him best escorted the 65-year-old in a touching procession. Preston was shot several times as he was responding to a domestic disturbance call. Police say it all started before 8 o'clock yesterday morning. Officers met with the suspect, Elmer Manzola, and his estranged wife to get her belongings out of the apartment. Manzono's 14-year-old son then opened the door. He told officers his dad had a gun, and that's when he fired several shots, even hitting his own son. Family and colleagues gathered at the hospital in shock about the sergeant's death. As good as he was as a cop, he was a better human being. That's just the guy that he was, and we're going to miss him. Preston had actually planned to retire soon. The other officer and the suspect's son are expected to be okay. The suspect remains under police guard as he recovers from a gunshot wound as well. Taking a look outside now this afternoon, another warm, sunny day across southeast Texas. Let's get an update on our forecast now with Christiana Ramos in our Storm Tracker Center. Good afternoon, Christiana. Good afternoon, Tracy. I'm sure it comes with no surprise that it is very humid out there today. We have some really moist air across the region than usual with humidity levels in the 80 percentile. We're seeing 70 percent in Jasper, 79 percent in Port Arthur, but mostly in the 80 percentile and then accompanied by those warmer temperatures. 79 in Port Arthur right now, 83 in Beaumont up in the Lakes area, 82 in Woodville and 81 one in Kirbyville. We can expect these conditions for the next several days. It is going to be very hot out there. So make sure you keep your ACs on, stay hydrated, and we're going to have more on your forecast later on. Pope Francis now calling for the creation of civil union laws for same-sex couples. According to the Catholic News Agency and the documentary, Francis says same-sex couples should be legally covered. Francis has long expressed an interest in outreach to the church's LGBT followers, but his remarks have often stressed general understanding and welcoming rather than substantive uh, policies. The documentary Francesco is premiering this week in Rome and later in the United States. The Pope gave an interview to the filmmaker saying that homosexuals have a right to be a part of the family. The Army has now determined that Houston native Vanessa Guillen's death was in the line of duty. The ruling entitles Guillen's family now to receive her full military benefits. The hashtag I am Vanessa Guillen bill is currently being deliberated in Washington and if it passes, it would allow active duty members to file sexual harassment and assault claims with a third party.
Total's Port Arthur Refinery says it's investigating after two releases yesterday. Residents who live near the plant may have noticed an odor in the air. And according to a company spokesperson, two plant alarms sounded, one at 9 a.m., the other at 1 p.m. No one was heard and things are now back to normal. But the company did release a statement saying no off-site impact was detected when air monitoring was performed. Monitoring continues along the refinery's fence line and they're now investigating to find out what went wrong? As flu season approaches, there's growing concern. We could be dealing with a twindemic patient sick with the flu and with COVID-19. We spoke with Southeast Texas doctor Gary Many with the Medical Center of Southeast Texas. He says the cold and flu season can bring on additional challenges. It can be tough for people to know what they're trying to fight. But if you're not feeling sick, he says you probably don't need to run out to be tested. People that are just going and getting tested to get tested with no symptoms. If your test is negative, that just means you're negative that day. So getting tested just to get tested doesn't you know, mean a whole lot. Dr. Many says eating healthy, exercise and getting enough sleep can all help you keep your immune system up. If you want to be tested, there is a testing site in Port Arthur today. All you have to do is take your ID and go to the Bob Bowers Civic Center. The pop-up clinic opened at 8 this morning and will run till 4 this afternoon or until supplies run out. Evidence is mounting to something we already suspected. Most Americans are stressed out about the pandemic and many are coping with mental health conditions because of it. If you don't have a diagnosis, Kate Snow reports most adults are feeling stressed. This morning, numbers confirming what we see and feel all around us. The American Psychological Association finding nearly 80% of adults say the coronavirus is a significant source of stress in their life. And two out of three say they've experienced increased stress over the course of the pandemic. Gen Z adults, the most likely to say they're lonely. Anxiety and depression was always something that was other people's issue. And then it became really real when I, when I knew I started dealing with it. When we first met Nick Clark in March, he had lost his job managing a restaurant. Since then, he's been taking it day by day. I love being around people. I love engaging. And too much time home alone is just it's not good for anybody. Another report finds between January and September, the number of people looking for help with anxiety and depression skyrocketed. America is definitely facing a mental health crisis as a result of the pandemic. We have seen an extraordinary number of people hundreds of thousands uh, who have come to us at Mental Health America for help and support far over and above what we would have seen before the pandemic. And the rate of people with moderate to severe symptoms of anxiety is climbing. Jamie Pereira is a mom of two young girls. She struggled with postpartum depression and anxiety. For her, the pandemic has been a roller coaster. It ebbs and flows. When we went to shelter in place, it spiked and then has kind of got used to that. But then my Daughter started kindergarten and trying to figure out the whole, you know, kindergarten from home. And if they open the schools, what are we going to do? And then now with the election coming up and everything surrounding that, and you no know, matter who wins, what everybody's reaction going to be. It's been peaks and valleys all throughout the pandemic. One of the most disturbing findings, more Americans are having thoughts of suicide, even children. In September, more than half of kids ages 11 to 17 reported thinking frequently about suicide. Their lives have so been cut out from underneath them. We find ways to still be with the people that we love. But for young people, teenagers in particular, those ways, a lot of them have been closed off to them. 